dual barrels and an externally adjustable everything. Coming up. AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawk Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Day State, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&M Sport, Aztec Optics, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Alright guys, the FX Crown Continuum comes to us from Sweden and it is the double barrel version of the Crown. It exists side by side with the Crown, meaning you can purchase either or, with the only differences being the two barrels that it comes with and the Dania Fell moderator. Now depending on your local market, you can pick one up in either 177, 22, 25 or 30. This one here with the 380 millimeter barrel measures 39 and 3 quarters inches long. With the 700 millimeter barrel, it measures 53 inches long. By itself, the continuum weighs just 6.9 pounds. As you see it here, to include a scope, mounts, and a bottle filled with air, it weighs in at 9.8. And with the addition of the new ultralight 700 millimeter barrel, it picks up just three tenths of a pound. Now the continuum can be had in either a black synthetic stock, which is a little bit lighter, or any, uh, any number of different laminates, which is a little bit heavier. This one's called Yellow Jacket, or a custom dip from Utah Air Guns. Now the rifle will ship with those two barrels, which are for pellets, a 380 millimeter and a 700 millimeter. There is a slug barrel available. It'll ship with a Donia Fell moderator, an extra high capacity 18 shot magazine, a stainless steel Foster Quick Connect extension, and a custom Negrini hard case to house it all. All right, now here in the States, the continuum comes with a three year warranty. And depending on the stock that you go with, you can pick one up from the crew at Utah Air Guns for anywhere between 1700 and about 2100 bucks. Now, the continuum is regulated by FX's externally adjustable amp, adjustable match precision regulator. So, when you fill its 480cc carbon fiber bottle to its 250 bar max, you're gonna get anywhere between 80 and 180 regulated shots with power anywhere between 31 and 48 foot-pounds of energy, with plenty of headroom to either tune up for more power or down for more efficiency. And of course, all of that is barrel, ammo, and tune uh, dependent. Now it'll happily push an 18 grain to 875 feet per second, or a 25 grain to 920, again with plenty of room to go up or down if you so desire. Now, the Continuum also takes advantage of FX's proprietary Smooth Twist X one gun interchangeable barrel caliber, length, and choke system. It also takes advantage of a full barrel shroud, one half inch UNF threads, a Dania Fell moderator, a weaver scope rail, side lever cocking, an externally adjustable transfer port, an externally and internally adjustable hammer spring, that externally adjustable amp regulator with dual readouts, one for your bottle pressure and one for your regulator pressure, an adjustable comb, an adjustable butt pad, and a dual stage match grade fully adjustable trigger with manual safety. So, do you still want to hold out for that impact? The FX Crown Continuum has been designed for the most avid of air gunners. That being said, you can receive it and shoot it as is with little to no fiddling and it'll perform just fine. But to do that would be wasteful of your money and all that this gun has to offer. In 40 inch form, the Continuum is sized just right for all around duty and load up is easy, as is cycling. 
Ditch the Donnie and the rig drops to just 35 inches. And when spitting 42 foot pounds is still plenty quiet. Maximum power, efficiency, and quietness accompanies the 53 inch trim. But like I said, the 380 millimeter barrel gets the job done just fine. If you're new here, pellet speed is tracked with Doppler radar. From the muzzle, all the way on down to the target in set increments. This allows you to see leaving and arriving energy levels, as well as to calculate ballistic coefficient. For the newcomer, these 18 grain JSBs are arriving 100 yards away at the same energy level that the average 177 caliber brake barrel makes at its muzzle at 1,000 feet per second. And as you'll see momentarily, air gun slugs carry even more energy further than do air gun pellets due to their increased ballistic coefficient. For example, the Diablo shaped pellet you see here has lost approximately 30% of its steam by the time it got to 100 yards. Another nifty little device for measuring velocity is the new FX Wireless Pocket Chronograph. At just 200 bucks, it costs a fraction of my $650 lab radar. So naturally, I approached it with a bit of skepticism. Turns out it measures velocity just fine and did so within a half a percent to a percent and a half of the lab radar, proving it to be a superb tuning tool. 888. And what's more, unlike with traditional chronographs, the pocket crony can be used in any lighting conditions to include total darkness. And its size advantage and convenience is obvious. 891. AAA batteries and an Android or Apple device are all you need to make it go. And maybe a set of Velcro straps from the local hardware store to replace the included rubber bands. <clears throat> the app is excellent. It gives you average, high, low, extreme spread, standard deviation, shot count, muzzle energy, and much more. With much, much more on the way. And something it does better than my lab radar is measure a shot count of over 100. Something that obviously came in very handy here. For what I paid for the orange one, I ought to be able to get an average high-low extreme spread and standard deviation of more than 100 shots at a time. And unofficially, pellet tracking is in the works for the FX wireless pocket chronograph. And if they pull it off, holy shit. The 700 millimeter pellet liner shoots a lot of things well, to include some slugs, as does the 380. For more on that and how to tune the continuum across three barrels, visit me on my second YouTube channel, AEAC Vlog. You'll find a 90 minute video there sharing a lot of critical information that you won't find here. Information that'll be important to your FX Crown continuum ownership experience. And that this design differs from a lot of the other FX guns and air guns in general is that this compression nut design actually comes out of the firearm industry, right? And it centers that liner perfectly in this receiver every time you take it in and out. And this was freaking me out. When I was doing my backyard due diligence, I got a 1500 rounds and tuning this thing almost another 500 and learning what ammo it likes to go back and forth between the different liners the point of impact change is next to nothing not only are you on paper but you're typically within half an inch to an inch and that is even removing not just changing like the whole system but that's even removing just a liner like this it's incredible what a nice job this does centering this liner inside that receiver, okay? So to remove it, we're gonna grab a 15 millimeter wrench. Get you guys back centered here. All right, and I'm going to gently 
go er, counterclockwise. You'll be able to do this by hand after a couple of turns, right? And I'm just going to back this nut out, okay? And as you can see, that just free floats on uh, on the liner, right? Then I'm just going to gently pull out the liner. Oop, there it goes. And that's all there is to it, guys. Now, there's some spacing that's important. You don't have to too much worry about the spacing of these O-rings. Kind of put them back in the general area because when I screw this back into here, all right, what you want or what I want so that I have great versatility in all these different pellets is I want a gun that responds in a linear fashion to me going through these different power settings. Okay, and the way you achieve that, all right, is this internal hammer spring is adjustable with, I think this is a 1.5 millimeter wrench, okay? I'm going to stick this 1.5 millimeter wrench in here. There it is, right there. And I'm going to feel it lock into place, all right? Now, there's probably five or six total turns of adjustment in here, maybe 30 or 40 like quarter turns. All right, and the way you want to set this up is you want you what you want to start with is with this on min. Okay, watch watch when I turn it from min to kind of half, min and a half and then one. So there's min and a half. You notice that didn't really move, and there's one, and now it's starting to move, and it's continuing to move. You guys can see that. Okay, let me go back to min. So between min and min and a half, there's almost no movement. Okay, before that cam picks it, pick picks it up and starts moving it for higher velocity. All right, and that's how you initially want to set up your gun. So it'll probably come from the manufacturer at that or very close to that. But maybe you bought it used or maybe you tuned it and you, and you want to kind of reset to get back to a good starting point. All right, just start going counterclockwise on, thi on this Allen, right, until you found a place, you've kind of found that neutral cam where it doesn't really move between min and min and a half. And then as soon as you kind of get to one, you feel it starting moving again. That's a good neutral place to be at 150 to 165 bar, okay? What that's going to do is, with the short barrel, that's going to give you about 875 feet per second um, over 80 or so shots um, with that 18.13 grain for about 31 foot-pounds, okay? And what it's going to enable you to do is turn down velocity so that it works well with a bunch of different pellets. And if you want to fine-tune from that point, you can do that with the regulator pressure. You can bring it down a little bit. You can bring it up a little bit. Um, you can adjust up or down without having to cock and shoot the gun. It's not going to hurt anything like with the old design. These amp regulators can be adjusted both ways, so you don't, uh, don't want to worry about that. Now, let me actually give you a visual of what that looks like. Okay, This is a really good example of what that neutral cam actually looks like. I call it a neutral cam because that cam in the beginning really isn't rolling up on that spring too much, if at all. Okay, And then as you uh, rotate the dial, it kind of picks it up and it starts moving, compresses the spring more, and you get more velocity. Right? Here's what that neutral cam looks like. These H&N 217 slugs weigh a whopping 27 grains. And while leaving the muzzle at just 825 feet per second, they're making the same amount of energy all the way out at 100 yards as our 18 grains were at the muzzle and at 875 feet per second. And they're only losing 13% of their speed and energy as they travel from the muzzle to the target. Unlike the lighter weight Diablo shaped pellet which lost 30% of its energy while traversing the same distance. The takeaway? Weight? and ballistic coefficient are your friend in the moment.
and I would encourage you to get off of the velocity train. More velocity equals more power, and more power equals more flip, and more flip equals less accuracy. In other words, striking a balance between docile and powerful is a better way to go, because you can always add a little bit more power when you have a little bit more wind. And air guns are so much more precise and so much more fun to shoot when they're not bucking all over the place. 900 and 1,000 feet per second just isn't necessary, even if someone you believe in told you so. To the contrary, it could be making your life more miserable, not to mention decreasing your gun's efficiency. The true holy grail of the experienced air gunner is harmony, not excessive power. All right, now the Continuum takes advantage of a 480cc carbon fiber bottle that can easily be sized up or down. Simply unscrew it and replace it with one of a different size. Now it's good for a 250 bar fill and depending how you set up the gun, that'll get you anywhere between 80 and 180 shots, say between 30 and 50 foot pounds of energy with plenty of headroom if you wanna go up in power on the 22 cal. Now to refill it, simply remove the Durland dust plug, take the proprietary Foster extension that ships with the gun, and hook it up. Now again, fill to no more than 250 bar, and then once again when you fall off that regulator. When you're done, bleed the air between your fill source and the gun. Remove your Foster Quick Connect and replace your dust cover. That's all there is to it. Another handy device is the KLS C adjustable butt pad. It's a product of Crawford and Lipton. It'll allow you to make several helpful adjustments. In fact, it kind of saved my ass for this review. The Continuum Smooth Laminate Stock is quite slick on a nylon bag, and I was finding it quite difficult to control, especially at the higher power settings. Crawford and Lipt quite literally saved the day for me. For more information on installation, you guessed it, check out my other video on AEAC Vlog. Macro and micro adjustments are available, making holdover adjustments a piece of cake. And the whole rig is quite solid, not to mention beautifully crafted. Also noteworthy are that these adjustments are in addition to the OEM adjustments that are already built into the butt pad. So really you've got a ton of adjustability, and your shoulder contact points seem infinitely adjustable as well. What's going on AAC fans? This is Stephen from Crawford & Lift. After you're done with this video, check out our website. we got parts for the Crown and other air guns. Got any questions? Feel free to reach out to myself or any of our dealers. Gotta go, so resume video. <laughs> Thanks Steve. For those of you that don't know, Steve's the owner and inventor of Crawford & Lift. And if you want to get a chance to meet him in person, attend the Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge, Extreme Bench Rest, or Pyramid Air Cup. And here's that website he was talking about. It's quite good. If you must have more speed, 920 to 940 will likely be the upper limits of your Diablo-shaped pellet. Even then, they do have a tendency to destabilize at these velocities. Now, of course, inside of 50 yards, this may be a non-issue, but out to 100, the phenomenon may begin to manifest itself. 
As I've been preaching, it'll be a game of give and take. As the wind comes up, the extra speed will help you to a point of diminishing returns. You just gotta tune for that sweet spot between flip, velocity, and wind. And remember, you're going to get about a 30% reduction in speed over 100 yards with the Diablo-shaped pellet. To be exact, 28% on that shot. You guys have heard me say it before. With pellets, 825 to 875 is more your friend than 900 and above. It's just where they like to be. All right, guys, now the triggers in these FXs are always so good just as they come. I've been able to review the Royale 400, the 500, the Streamline, the Dreamline, a couple of Impacts, a couple of Wildcats, and now the second Crown, and they always come to you breaking at about a pound. None of this four, five, six pound crap where you got to invest all this time in getting the trigger into a workable place. Now it is dual stage, it is match grade, and it is fully adjustable if you do want to fiddle with it. That first stage take up is very light and very clean and very short, and it comes up against a nice abrupt stop. And with just a little bit more pressure, off it goes. One pound, even. A good value between pellet and slug is the JSB Monster redesign. They're significantly less expensive and over 100 yards only lose 23 to 25% of their velocity. And tend to do much better in a crosswind too. But before that, the obvious elephant in the room is the custom Hydra dipped stock by Utah Air Guns. For 175 bucks, you got a bunch to choose from and it can really make a difference in the overall look and feel of your gun. I say feel because some of them are textured and can be quite grippy. The bottle bipod adapter is by Sabre Tactical and it too can be found at Utah Air Guns, as can the AccuTac bipod. Oh, and I almost forgot, you're looking at the 700mm slug barrel now. And your eyes are not deceiving you, it loves the JSB redesigns. And as you'll soon see, I found a couple of slugs it likes too.
Now, despite being set up to around 32 foot pounds or about 890 feet per second with an 18 grain, the 380 millimeter, even though it's shrouded and moderated, can have just a little bit of a snap to it, but it's by no means loud. Now, if you want to quiet things down, you got a couple of different options. The shroud is finished off in one half inch UNF threads, or you can turn power down to around 700 feet per second or around 20 foot pounds with that 18 grain. Now to bust out the 700 is to bolt on 150 feet per second or about 10 foot pounds of energy without changing anything else on the gun. And on full burn at that 10 foot pounds of energy more than the 380 mil, it's gonna have similar sound levels due to the added capacity inside the shroud. The included high capacity side shot magazine is phenomenal. It's super easy to use, and the only rounds that didn't fit in it were the standard poly mags and the H&N Hornets. Everything else you see here went in and fed with zero issues, and just as important maintained accuracy, as well as flawless feeding and cycling. And I love the ability to be able to just dump it out if you don't want to finish the cartridge, or if you find one in there with a dented skirt. The only caveat is that you'll need some super tall rings to get it to fit under the scope. But these IPS 34s by Eagle Vision Cam got the job done in high fashion. <laughs> get it? High fashion? <laughs> Never mind. Our 700 millimeter slug barrel here is doing pretty good. I found it to like the H&N Slug HP, 217s and 218s, a bunch of the NSA slugs, 20 to 25 grains, the JSB redesign, and of course, the FX hybrid slugs. In case you hadn't heard, FX has a new line of scopes. Well, sorta. Matt Dubber, Ted Beer, and Shane Keller are the brains behind it all. And FX is financially backing the whole thing. The Helix Titan and Nexus are in the $400, $800, and $1,500 price point, And all three come with a lifetime warranty. For more, check out my video interview with Matt Dubber. I caught up with them in Sweden while they are filming the FX Air Guns factory tour video. Another one you'll want to be sure to check out if you haven't already. The Titan I've got here is a pre-production unit, so I'll hold final comment until I can get one out of the first batch shipment. But I will say this, the glass is extraordinary, and there ain't nothing I don't like about anything else. Now on to these FX hybrid slugs. Don't know any other way to explain this other than to just show it to you, because I don't understand the science. But take note of the wind, and compare it to the wind in the other 100 yard groups you've seen in this video. And watch how straight these damn things fly. And if you want to see them shot into calibrated ballistic gelatin at 50 yards, check out some of my other videos here. Holy shit. Reduction in speed over 100 yards was about 17 to 18% for me. And their 22 grain weight seemed to be kind of a sweet spot between speed and flip, making them super easy to shoot well.
Well, that's all for today, guys. And special thanks to Utah Air Guns for getting the Continuum, Titan, Crawford and & Lipt, and FX Pocket Chronograph into my hands to review for you. You guys know the best way to thank them for that one. Now from here, you all want to head on over to the Air Gun Nation forum so that you can participate in the discussion thread on the Continuum. I'll leave you a link on how to get there in the description down below. So with that, I'm Steve Shally. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great week everyone.